Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi and welcome back to the museum. This video is a follow-up video of last year's video that we did on the stick slip effect and how to clean your felt pad. This video will show you how you can actually replace the complete felt pad with a new one if need to be because sometimes the squealing and problems come back even after cleaning. We also share a little bit of information with you after we got contacted by Sander Clerk. He's also known as Mr. Cassette in the DCC engineering community because he helped develop two other felt pads not known to most members. Those felt pads are situated on the left and right at the rollers and called cleaning felt pads. The cleaning felt pads were created to help with stability issues but also to clean up the residue caused by cutting the tape by BASF from videotape to this width. In this video we will share all that information with you. Like we discussed in the previous video, the stick slip effect caused by a dirty felt pad in the middle will cause a high pitch tone coming from the player. It is not the player but the felt pad causing this. The felt pad can be cleaned but sometimes the problem comes back. Playback and recording will be disrupted once this happens. We found a matching felt pad that although it looks quite different, it will solve this problem. When developing the tape, the Philips engineers ran into several problems. The felt pad was created in Italy with a special coating to solve this problem of the stick slip effect. Long term, when the coating dries out or the felt pads get extremely dirty, the original problem comes back. That is why sometimes even new seal tapes can have this issue. If they were stored incorrectly, the felt pads might not have enough coating left. By cleaning, you roughen the felt pad but also remove more of the coating but it will work to temporarily get you a perfectly working tape again. If the problem comes back, most DCC enthusiasts end up throwing away the tape. Now we have found a more permanent solution for these tapes and although we have tested the durability, which was perfect, we still do not know the long-term effect of the new felt pad. But to be honest, it beats throwing away any tape. To replace the felt pad, a small vise comes in handy and you will have to loop out the tape. A small piece of masking tape will hold the slider in the open position. We drench the old fat pad with some IPA to loosen the glue on the back and holding it in place. Then you can carefully remove the old felt pad. We use two tools for removal, a surgical tool and a small screwdriver to prevent damaging the small metal part that holds the original felt pad. The new felt pad is peel and stick, meaning that it already has double sided tape in place. Though slightly larger, it still fits perfectly. Now you can loop back the tape and it's ready for testing. We asked Sander why a felt pad that looks so different would still work and he said just like back in the early 90s, there is really no scientific explanation, you just need to test intensively. Several members have tested this solution with no negative results. Keep in mind that this was a tape we were no longer able to use before. Not bad for a felt pad made out of recycled plastic bottles. Now back to Sander Clark's invention, both side felt pads. The washers, as he calls them, wash all particles left from cutting the tape to the right width and prevent these particles to disturb recording or playback. Over time, the particles now stored on that felt pad can also cause problems. If you do not rewind the tape to the beginning and leave it like that over a longer period of time, grease coming from these side felt pads will leave a mark on the tape, causing a potential dropout. The side felt pads, one of them shown here on the left, cannot be replaced. 
You can clean the mark left on the tape by cleaning it previously shown in one of our videos or just wind the tape back and forth from beginning to end until the problem is solved. Another problem caused by not rewinding the tape is coming from the roller itself. Most likely the lubrication used can transfer onto the tape, but this time it's on the back side of the tape. If your player acts erratically by stopping at a certain point or keeps going back and forth from side A to side B, you will see a mark like this that can be cleaned with a cotton swab and some IPA. The moral of the story is if you nicely rewind your tapes before storage, you should never have any problems. If you would like to receive new felt pads on our forum, it's well documented on how to get them. And of course, we always have them available for patrons at the DCC Museum Store. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.